Believers are in a state of conflict, not in a state of condemnation. Our old nature is always there trying to get us to go back to the old ways. But our new nature, alive in Christ Jesus, is leading us on our spiritual path to spiritual success, to knowing God in a better way, to changing our old nature. And then verse 8-1 says, we, the old man is ruled by the flesh, the law of sin and death. 8.1 says, There is therefore now no condemnation in them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. It doesn't say that our old nature is gone. Because Paul says, Oh, wretched man that I am. Oh, miserable me. I am totally miserable. I am sinful. This is after he believed in Jesus. This is after he received salvation through the grace of God. But he mentions and acknowledges the conflict that goes on within us as believers. And if you think you have no conflict, you need to check that out with Scripture. Jesus said, Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. How do we know about mourning unless we've experienced loss? Unless we've experienced a situation that has caused us to grieve? And how do we know about grace that comes to us unless we know that we've been sinners? That, that our old nature is still sinning, even after we come to Christ and know him personally. I want to go back to one little word in that verse. Therefore, there is now no condemnation. Wasn't no condemnation for the past sins, no condemnation for future sins, no condemnation for now. No condemnation for who we are, the old person, the unregenerate person, the one who was there controlling our lives before we came to Christ. No condemnation. But Paul still says he's wretched. Because now that the Holy Spirit is revealing Jesus to him, he sees that sinful man. He sees those choices and decisions that are against God's plan, that do not reflect what God would have him to be. And even though we, like Paul, want to follow Christ, we want to never sin. We want to always do exactly what's right and pleasing to God. We don't. 1 John 6 one six says, if we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not know the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But 1 John 1, 9 says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And again, verse 10 says, If we say that we have not sinned, we make him, God, a liar, and his word is not in us. What we need to do is confess our sins. Acknowledge that that sinful man is still in there in conflict with the spiritual man. And we need to not try to hide that sin from God because he knows. He knows all about the sin we commit. I had a friend who always prayed, Lord, please forgive us for our sins of commission and omission. Because we can think we're doing everything right as we see it, but we're omitting something. There's always something there that could be, should be, will be 
revealed by the light of Jesus Christ. He brings it to light. We see this is not pleasing to God. We confess it. Oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? That's an interesting scripture. Actually, Paul was referring to a custom that the Romans had. If someone murdered another person, the victim of the murder was tied to the murderer. And they drug that body around with them wherever they went. That dead body was tied to them when they went to bed, when they got up in the morning, when they ate, when they went to work. And you know what dead bodies do? They decay, they smell really bad. But they were tied to the murderer. And he had to suffer that. And, and Paul's saying, who can deliver me from this body of death and sin? Well, we know the answer to that. The only one who delivers us from our sin is Jesus Christ. Through God's grace that allowed Jesus to be crucified on that cross, to give his life, shed his blood so that we could be redeemed, so that we could know who God is. True faith, the faith that we have because we are born anew, acknowledges and confesses sin. Others can accuse us of wrongdoing. Satan accuses us of wrongdoing. We accuse ourselves all the time. Oh, why did I do that? How could I be so stupid? That was wrong. Oh, what do I do to make up for this? God does not accuse us. God does not condemn us. He says, get to the next page here. He does not condemn us because we were born with the original sin from Adam and Eve. He does not condemn us for the actual sins that we commit when we Sin is in Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. He does not condemn us for that. There is no condemnation when we humble ourselves and weep and groan before God because that we've offended someone or we've offended God. And there's no condemnation even when we are putting ourselves down or when we are acknowledging that what we do is not according to God's plan. No condemnation from God. Condemnation comes from Satan. He's called the accuser of the brethren. But God has forgiven us for our sins. Even though that old nature is still there, God has forgiven us. And so he does not condemn us. Satan accuses us. Satan wants us to feel guilt. Satan wants us to, to think, oh, I'm no longer a believer. Oh, God has turned his back on me. Oh, how could God accept me or love me? Remember who Satan is? In scripture, he's called the father of lies. Our conscience censures us every day. But our conscience doesn't always follow God's commands. Our conscience is based on our family of origin a lot of times. It's based on our culture. What's right in Paradise, California is not right in Africa and vice versa. And sometimes we judge ourselves based on our culture. And we condemn ourselves. We look for hope within, within the old man. Hope built on our own works, on the uh, forgiveness that we extend to ourselves. But our consciences need to constantly be purged from all of those self-righteous acts, from all of those dead works. Scripture says in 1 John 3.20, if our heart condemn us, God is greater than our hearts. God knows all things. We think we know ourselves. Mike's always telling me he knows me better than I know myself. 
But God knows me much better than Michael even does. He knows me. He knows what he has planned for me. He knows what he wants to lead me to and what he wants me to become for his honor and glory. There is no condemnation for all of my past sins. No condemnation for all of my offenses. No condemnation from God for all the sins I'm going to sin in the future. Does that give me license to sin? Oh, well, I'll just sin. God accepts me. No. He convicts us of our unrighteousness. He tells us what righteous behavior is. And God is our cheerleader. He is encouraging us to move on, to further embrace that man of the spirit instead of the old dead man of the flesh. There is no condemnation. When we realize that God does not condemn us, that we are free from the guilt and the sin, it should fill our hearts with joy. It should lift us up, elevate us into heavenly places, let us know what we're doing in this kingdom of God that we're walking here. Satan likes to drag us down. Satan likes to point fingers and condemn. He likes to tell us we are no good. But we are because of God's grace. We are in Christ Jesus as believers. We who trust the Son of God are in him, and there is no condemnation to us. Back to what Paul said, does that give us license to sin? No, it doesn't. We want to live in the grace of God because that shows God to those around about us. Those who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ are in Christ. We believe in what the Son of God, Jesus Christ, did for us. We are to walk after the Spirit, not after the flesh. But when we do trip up, we know that there is forgiveness for our sins and acceptance from God. We do not walk according to the dictates of our flesh, but by the works of righteousness through Christ Jesus. Not our own self-righteousness, but the righteousness from our Heavenly Father. We were to walk by the Spirit, to seek eternal life by faith in Christ alone, trusting Him to do for us what we could never, ever do for ourselves. Which takes me back to the last line of that poem. I can at least guarantee that his stay while here shall never be a comfortable one. We never want to let that old man, that old flesh, live comfortably with our spirit. We want to make sure that that old man, that one that continues to sin, is not comfortable in our life in the spirit. And we to seek after life in the spirit, follow Christ, let him direct our paths, let him Help us make the choices that will glorify the Father. God bless you.